Okay, well last time around we noted that we're going to illustrate some of the functionality of um, uh, IX1D. Uh, we're, we're taking a look at a sounding that you're already familiar with. We have um, uh, sounding number three. And uh, these are the horizontal dipole observations. These are the vertical dipole observations. And usually when IX1D comes up you'll have a uh, default model. In this case it's a simple two-layer model which obviously does not produce a response which matches the observations. Uh, the observations are telling us that we have a high conductivity zone. Both the horizontal and the vertical dipole measurements are telling us that. <clears throat> the calculations obviously show us that this model really is not going to do the job for us. Now there's a, there's a lot of functionality in the buttons up here. This is just kind of a, a quick uh, introduction to IX1D. And uh, we're going to take a look at the, well, let's take a look at the uh, sounding data window. Uh, these are the operating frequencies here. We have um, uh, for the EM31, EM34, for the 3.67, 10, 20, and 40 meter intercoil spacings. Uh, these are the operating frequencies uh, for the instruments uh, at those settings. And then these are the hor horizontal dipole measurements and the vertical dipole measurements. So this is a critical window. This is, a, you know, if you collected data, this is where you'd enter it and uh, in your survey. But we aren't going to spend any more time here. What we want to do is come over here and develop a model. Now remember, <clears throat> a geologist has already told us a lot about this area. We know that there are basically three layers at the test well where we have a resistivity log. We know that there is a near surface uh, clay, layer, clay layer which is 10 meters thick. We know that there's an aquifer that uh, lies beneath that that's 20 meters thick, some of which may be contaminated and some of which may not be. So we're going to uh, put in two intervals here, one of which may be contaminated, the other just fresh water, and then beneath the uh, aquifer we have a layer of silt. Now the thicknesses, we don't really know how thick the contaminated zone is, we don't know how thick the fresh water zone is, and the silt goes down out of our zone of interest in it doesn't really have much. Whatever's down there doesn't influence our observations, or, or at least we, we assume that it doesn't. Parameters that we can fix, the conductivity of the surface clay. We don't know what this is. We don't know how thick it is. We know how thick this is, so we'll fix that. It's 10 meters. We know that the conductivity of the freshwater zone is 10 millisiemens per meter, that of the underlying silt, 15 millisiemens per meter, and uh, let's fix that up. That should be, that should be uh, 10 meters. So we've fixed everything that the geologist tells us that we can uh, to constrain our model. And uh, <clears throat> at this point, we're kind of on our, um, we're, we're relying on um, IX1D functionality to tell us, uh, okay, this might be your initial guess. Well, it's not much better than the one we had before. Um, we can see that the calculated conductivities are way too low and uh, don't really match the observations at all. Well, IX1D has some nice functionality. You can see here we can go through um, an inverse calculation process that will attempt to minimize this error. We have 53% error here. Let's do one iteration. And the iterations, what they do is they try to minimize the difference between the calculations and the observations. They, the, the code is designed to minimize the root mean square difference between calculations and observations, so we get uh, uh, 
<clears throat> just with one iteration we reduce our error down to less than 3%. So as we would have expected, you know, just looking at the data without looking at this at all, the upper portion of the aquifer is contaminated. And, um, but we don't have a perfect match yet. So we can go in and we can do more iterations. And it'll do multiple iterations there. And you can see that uh, we're, we're getting that error down to below 1%. And this is synthetic data, so we can, you know, if we keep going, we can probably get it down to zero. Uh, but here we have a very, very small error. We have 0.03% uh, <clears throat> error looking, looking down here. So you won't, this won't happen to you when you're working with real data. Uh, you probably wish it would, but it doesn't work out that way. So <clears throat> this is basically the model window. This is some of the functionality that you have in here. You can see some other functionality that you can uh, uh, play around with. And uh, we're just going to exit this window. We've done pretty much what we want to. Um, we do know a couple things. Um, in order to honor the geology, we need to bring the um, bring the um, base of the aquifer down to 30 meters. We could easily come over here and put that in exactly. So we have 30 meters in there. And, uh, and so we can see that we have uh, about 9.7 meters of contamination, about 10.3 meters of, uh, of fresh water in the base, and then we get down into the silt. And, uh, so this model that we've developed honors all the geological observations that we have in the area. Uh, we've <clears throat> we we maintain the thickness of the uh, surface clay. We maintain the depth to the base of the aquifer. Um, we're consistent uh, with the uh, with the data. I don't know whether I did a forward on that or not, but uh, uh, so the base of the aquifer is down here at, at 30. We've got a good match here, about uh, you know less than one percent error, and uh, so a very reasonable, uh, reasonable result. If you were presenting this data, you'd want to go on and do a little bit more with the uh, equivalent solutions and so on before you've made your final presentation. But this, this gives you an idea of um, of the modeling process. Uh, again, just a very brief intro to IX1D functionality. And uh, uh, Interpex Limited does have a download site, and you can actually download uh, an IX1D demo version. So I recommend that you, uh, you know, if you're interested, to, to, to uh, visit the Interpex uh, site and uh, uh, play around with uh, this software. It's very easy to use and easy to learn. Talk to you later. Thank you.